Hello, and welcome to The Framework 1970. I'm Todd Billingsley, and on today's episode, we are going to finish up a four-part series on a research study that was published in the Journal of Administrative Sciences titled The Functions of a Servant Leader. We started with the characteristics of the, and competencies of a servant leader, then we moved on to the measurements of servant leaders. Today, we're going to look at part four on the impact that servant leaders have on strategy and operations of an organization. Uh, and as we said before, this is really an excellent research article. Uh, anyone who wants to become a better leader, anyone who is hiring leaders for their organization, or anyone who's building out leadership development programs, this article, I believe, is essential to help you do that and do that really, really well, because it does an excellent job of sharing the research and the evidence about the impact that servant leadership has on organizations. And as I said before, it's profound and powerful. So. Without further ado, let's get into part four, the strategic and operational impact of servant leaders. Strategic leadership is divided into two main functions as the authors found in their research. One, to set, translate, and execute a higher purpose vision, and two, to become a role model and ambassador. One of the servant leadership competencies identified by the literature review was to set a compelling vision for an organization. A higher purpose vision is worthless without translating it and executing it. It is vital for servant leaders to translate the vision into workable goals that is clearly understood by followers. This process involves translating the vision into a mission, strategy, and practical goals. It includes designing the capability and capacity frameworks, as well as processes, policies, and systems support the vision, mission, and strategy. The process of developing the capability and capacity frameworks and supporting it with relevant processes, policies, systems relate well to the factors of high-performing organizations, such as establishing and communicating a clear vision, mission, and strategy, being customer-oriented, having simple, standardized, and innovative processes and systems, and ensuring continuous learning and development and sustaining a high-quality workforce. Servant leaders apply courage and altruism to set, translate, and execute a compelling vision to the benefit of employees, the organization, and society. Servant leaders, first and foremost, are stewards of the organization, right? They want to leave that organization better than the day they found it or the, the day they were asked to lead it and those within it. They want to identify and develop leaders to take their place to continue the legacy that they built or the, or the vision that they built together. I think too many leaders in organizations today only think about themselves. They're really driven by their ego, not about being stewards of the organization or those within it. Um, that's why I think they companies continue to fail to optimize performance. They fail to optimize innovation. They fail, fail to optimize a culture, culture that together people will do their best to be stewards of that organization and optimize performance through the culture, through the people that work within them. As we talked about before, you know, Zig Ziglar's famous quote is, you don't build a business, you build the people and the people build the business. That's kind of the mindset of servant leadership in this area. Servant leaders set a higher purpose vision through altruism because they're others oriented. They're selfless, right? They have a desire to help others. They make a positive difference. They're putting the interests of others first and they're serving others to become better. Hence making that organization better overall. So that's the impact that servant leaders have, and that's the impact that this study revealed servant leaders' impact on organizations, society, and individuals. Servant leaders have the courage to stand up for what is right and to do things ethically to the best interest of others, the customer, the public, their constituents. We have all seen the destructive impact of egocentric and selfless leaders and the ruin they leave for the people they serve, the organizations that they, they are asked to lead, or the communities that they are asked to serve. Servant leaders embrace the role of being a, an ambassador and role models because of the mindset they have around stewardship. They are focused on attracting top talent, developing that talent, and being role models of how things should be done to optimize the company's performance and the culture through their actions, not just their words. As Winston Churchill once said, the price of greatness is responsibility, and servant leaders take this to heart. They're not perfect, they're gonna make mistakes, but they will own them, they'll learn from them, and they'll move forward to get better. It's not about their ego, right? It's about mastering this idea of being a great leader and learning 
um, and every opportunity to learn to become better. This is why one of the key tenets of servant leadership, really, but of any top leader, is that they're always growing and learning. The best leaders know and are humble and vulnerable enough to know that they can learn from anyone at any time if they're open to it. Hence, leading and managing oneself is so important. To grow, to learn from mistakes, to the dedication and discipline it takes to become a great leader, it isn't easy or a linear process. It's messy. But great leaders accept this. They are vulnerable, humble, and gracious enough to be transparent about the work they're doing to become the best leader they can be. These leaders understand what they're good at. They're humble and vulnerable enough to know where they aren't. They know where they need help and don't mind saying it. This drives so much trust, so much belonging when people know you're not perfect, that you have weaknesses, you have opportunities to grow, and you're open to this and you share this and you're willing to listen to others to make yourself better. That is truly powerful stuff. This mindset of personal growth, right, of, of being humble, being vulnerable, uh, is, is the mindset that enables servant leaders to flip operational orientation on its head. Because the operation is not about pleasing the leader. It's about pleasing the customer. And you please the customer best when you have a highly engaged, highly purposeful, highly developed employees who focus on making that customer's experience exceptional. For servant leaders in an operational environment, their mandate is clear. It's one, to align, care, and grow talent. And two, continuously monitor and improve. They instill that Kaizen mindset that permeates the organization and every employee in it to get better and continue to improve and grow and develop so they become better and hence the company becomes better, performs at a high, higher level, innovates faster than other companies and provides exceptional customer experience. This is part four of a four part series from this research article, The Functions of a Servant Leader. As I said at the beginning, the impact that servant leaders and servant leadership has on an organization is so powerful. This study has helped me frame my new company called The Framework around the characteristics competencies needed to lead a high-performance organization. I hope you enjoyed this series and that it empowers you to become a better leader, to hire better leaders, and to optimize the culture and ultimately the performance of your organization. Thanks for joining me on this four-part series. Please join me on The Framework 1970 on YouTube or on LinkedIn.